Dennis Lamoureux, Daryl Falk, and many theistic evolutionists, or now they would prefer to be called evolutionary creationists, have said that if there is any evidence of intelligent design in the universe, it's all front-loaded from the beginning. There's no evidence of design occurring after the very beginning of the universe. And they use an illustration to convey their point. Lam uh, Lamoureux talks about imagining that uh, God is like a pool player who's got uh, so much skill that with one shot he can knock all the balls into the, 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 the table, on the billiards table, uh, in, in one go. Um, and so it's not really clear exactly what he means there, but he seems to be envisioning some kind of front and loaded design where all the design is put in to the universe at the very, very beginning. And if that's what he means, there's one of two possibilities about what that could mean further. Either he means that there's information in the laws of nature that cause living things to arise inevitably from the first simple beginnings of the universe, or there's information in the configuration or arrangement of the elementary particles from the beginning, which is simply transmitted by the laws of nature, and that then produces living things. Um, the, in the essay that I've written in the God and Evolution book, I've shown that neither of those two uh, options really make sense. What we know about the laws of nature is that they don't generate information. They describe patterns of repetitive order. Sun up, sun down. Every time I drop a, uh, an unsupported body, it will fall. We'll do that repeatedly, and therefore I describe such motions with, physicists describe such motions with the law of nature. So the laws of nature describe repeating patterns not uh, what you might call mantras, not messages. Here's another way to get a handle on why the laws of nature don't generate or create information. Imagine that you have a group of helicopters hovering above uh, the Los Angeles Coliseum before a big football game. And then on cue, they all drop the uh, paintballs down, 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 and they splat on the, on the, uh, the football field below. And it, as you look from the stands, you realize that the paintballs spell out a message. Go, USC. Now you might be tempted to say, oh, look at how much information the law of gravity produced. But of course, it wasn't the law that produced the information. It was the specifically arranged formation of helicopters hovering above the, the stadium, which if you had an even higher vantage point, would have also been spelling out, go, USC. In other words, the information was present in the initial configuration of the helicopters, what physicists call the initial conditions. So to talk about laws generating information is actually, uh, uh, it's incorrect. Laws may transmit information that is already there, but they don't generate information in the first place. So once we're clear on that, and then we think uh, about Lamoureux's proposal or Falk, Falk's proposal that all the information is front end loaded, uh, then it's got to be not in the laws, but in the initial conditions. The initial arrangement of the elementary particles just milliseconds after the Big Bang. The physicists think initially that the, 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 there, were, there was a split second of time before particle formation, but at some point then, there would have been particles, they would have been arranged in a certain way, and if Falk and Lamoureux's proposal is to have any scientific uh, force, it must have been there in those initial conditions that the information was embedded to produce the first life. Now, I think it's demonstrable that that proposal doesn't work. And here's why. It has to do with the structure of DNA itself. Let's just ask ourselves a question. Because in order to explain the first life, you have to first explain the origin of the information necessary to produce a living cell, to produce the proteins, for example, that a cell needs to survive. So here's a question. Was there enough information in the elementary particles at the beginning of the universe to, under a law-governed system, produce the information necessary to pr produce the first life millions and millions of years later? Um, I think it's clear that it wasn't. And the, the reason for that is the structure of DNA itself. If you look at the DNA molecule, you'll see that there are three different basic chemical subunits. You have, you have bases, you have uh, sugars and you have phosphates. The sugars and phosphates form the backbone of the DNA molecule. The bases function like alphabetic characters or digital characters conveying information. And it's the arrangement of those bases that is responsible for the information that DNA encodes. Now as you examine the physical structure of the DNA molecule, it turns out that there are forces of chemical attraction that, uh, that 
that explain why the, sh the, the bases stick to the sugar phosphate backbone. But there are no laws of chemical attraction that determine their sequencing. There's in fact no connections at all between the bases, and the same kind of chemical connection connects each one of the four bases, the information bearing uh, characters in the genetic code, to the backbone. So the chemistry doesn't determine the arrangement of the bases along the, the backbone of the molecule. I have an illustration that makes this clear. Imagine you've got a bunch of magnetic letters, you stick them to a metallic surface like a refrigerator. There is a force of attraction that explains why the letters stick to the refrigerator, but that force of attraction does not determine the arrangement of the letters that might spell out a message or alternately some gibberish. In, in fact, the information there always comes from an intelligent agent arranging, arranging the magnetic letters. Well, in the same way, there are no forces of attraction that determine the arrangement of the information-bearing bases in the DNA molecule. Now, if that's true of DNA, then what that means is that if you had all the necessary chemical constituents of DNA sitting in very favorable chemical circumstances, some kind of prebiotic soup, you still wouldn't have the information necessary to build the DNA molecule. Uh, and, but now let's take that back one step further. By extension, as the philosophers say, a fortiori, so much the more, would it be the case that those elementary particles way back at the beginning of the universe would lack the information necessary to build a, a functioning gene, an information-bearing section of DNA? In other words, if you don't have the information in the chemical constituents, the biologically relevant and much more complex chemical constituents of DNA itself, you certainly don't have the information necessary to build a gene or any of the other parts of life way back in the beginning when you just have elementary particles just after the Big Bang. So when, when uh, Daryl Falk and Dennis Lamoureux and the other evolutionary creationists or theistic evolutionists want to say that there's no need to invoke intelligent design to explain anything after the beginning of the universe, their argument is actually contrary to what we know about the science itself. Information beyond what was present in the Big Bang has come into the system to get life going long after the beginning of the universe. And there are no known evolutionary mechanisms, not mechanisms based on chance, not me mechanisms based on necessity, law-like necessity, or mechanisms based on the combination of the two that can account for the origin of that information. Instead, the only known cause of the origin of information is intelligence. And for that reason, as I've argued in Signature in the Cell, when we look at the origin of life and we see that it's an, an event that required a great infusion of new information, what we're actually looking at is evidence of intelligent design. Design that appears to have entered the, the, the system long after the beginning of the universe. The front end loaded view of intelligent design, the front end loaded view of evolutionary creation does not actually work scientifically.